The Nintendo Switch has been missing a Diablo style hack and slash loot fest since it launched a year and a half ago. Thankfully THQ Nordic have ported the hit 2006 PC title Titan Quest to the platform, but is the port any good? By now if you're a fan of the ARPG genre, odds are you've already experienced Titan Quest back when it launched over a decade ago. Since then, the game has been re-released multiple times. Firstly it was ported by developer .emu to Android and iOS devices in mid-2016. Shortly after, the Anniversary Edition arrived late in 2016 on PC, which included hundreds of bug fixes, improvements, quality of life changes and a bunch more. Over 11 years after the release of the original Titan Quest, a brand new expansion titled Ragnarok was released in November 2017. Finally, a few months ago, the Anniversary Edition was ported to the Xbox One and PS4 consoles. It's taken a few months for the Switch version to arrive, but the prospect of one of the ARPG greats playable on a proper handheld gaming console has been a tantalising one for me ever since it was announced. I'm a big fan of the original. It's not perfect, but it's a brilliant ARPG that provided some fond memories. Shortly after the port release, chat had begun online about the poor quality of the port. With many people facing heavy crashing issues and plenty of bugs, some not seen in other versions of the game. However, my experience over the past tens of hours has been a very different one. It's worth prefacing my thoughts with the disclaimer that around 90% of my time spent with the port has been in portable mode. The mode where for me, a game like this truly shines. Titan Quest Anniversary Edition on the Nintendo Switch has largely been a solid experience for me. I'm yet to experience a single crash in all of my time with the game. It's worth noting that the developers did release a patch 1.01 which addressed a number of issues only days after the game launched. The Switch version includes all of the Anniversary Edition changes, including the Immortal Throne expansion, 2-6 player multiplayer and split screen. Ragnarok, however, is yet to arrive for any of the console editions including the Switch. However, we have been assured that it is on the way. As if the expansion's rune mastery skill set being present but greyed out in the mastery menu wasn't enough of a hint. Visually, the game holds up well in both portable and docked mode. The game looks relatively sharp in both modes, with the lack of anti-aliasing making jagged edges appear a bit more noticeable when docked and playing on the big screen. Performance wise, I haven't seen too many issues either. When there's a bunch of effects popping off and enemies on screen, the frame rate can get a little bit ropey, sure, but I've never felt that it caused any major issues for me. Generally speaking, throughout most of my gameplay, the game played smoothly, even in handheld mode. Unfortunately, there's no touch screen support here, so navigating the game's obviously PC focused UI can at times feel a little bit cumbersome. It'd have been great to see THQ Nordic introduce some Switch specific input features here, alas, that is not the case. After a short while, I did feel right at home with the UI though. Managing items and skills feels fine on the Joy-Cons. There's been some pretty overblown chatter about the UI's size when playing in portable mode, but I can't say that I ever had any major issues reading or using the game's UI throughout my heavy portable playtime. Some things are small, text etc, but they always remain perfectly legible. It's not perfect, but it was fine for me. The game's audio quality does show its age. The voice acting is pretty terrible by modern standards, but the game's story was never really what players were here for anyway. I know it's dangerous here, but I can't go home. My daughter was supposed to be married. Alas. That said, even the game's many audio samples are often of a pretty low quality. It's a shame that there was no remastering done here. I have encountered a few bugs here and there, but never anything that severely damaged my experience. For example, loot occasionally appears at my feet despite being meters away from the enemy that just died. The audio cue for dropping an item seems to play randomly whilst I'm navigating my inventory and skill menus. Also, dropped items sometimes appear to just float in the environment. That said, despite my experience, it's worth knowing that many players are still mentioning multiple bugs such as the vanishing of items from their inventory, a bug which certainly is not acceptable. The bug appears to be somewhat tied to equipping artifacts, so be aware. Whilst I haven't noticed it in my playthrough, this is absolutely something which needs resolving for those which are experiencing it. Whilst I've had a blast with the game, it would have been nice to see some more quality of life features introduced to the game after all these years. Weapon impacts, for example, is something which was severely lacking in the original game, and it remains so all these years later. There's no blood or gore in Titan Quest. Granted, I do feel a little sadistic saying this, but the lack of real impact effects, blood or gore, makes the combat feel a whole less satisfying than it could and should. Sure, bodies still go flying in their infamous over-the-top ragdoll way, but it's just not the same. 
Titan Quest Anniversary Edition is the full PC experience shrunk onto a 6.2 inch display attached to a portable device with an impressively low power consumption. It's great stuff to play. Outside of Ragnarok, nothing is missing here. It's the same fantastic game that we played 13 years ago. The Switch version controls fine, runs pretty well and looks good in both portable and dock modes. Whilst there really is no excuse to still see bugs present in the game after all these years and multiple re-releases, I have had a blast with the port. Hopefully THQ Nordic can solve the major issues that some folks are experiencing. I can only form an opinion based on my own experience with the game and that experience has been a pretty good one. The game is addictive as it was all those years ago. The Switch version is the perfect ARPG machine too. Hopefully Titan Quest leads the way for similar titles to follow. For now though, I'm going back to slay some harpies from the bath.